Um, I've had so many emails sent in to me, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I think um, what we're doing is, is uh, obviously what I'm, what I'm doing is working. Uh, we're slowly, actually maybe rapidly, but we're steadily creating a circle of very intelligent people, very well-informed people who aren't celebrities, who aren't craving camera lens time, who have nothing to sell, nothing to gain, but, but helping people. Okay, so, um, you know, there's a handful of people out there that are pretty brave individuals. Um, there's still the majority of people out there when it comes to this topic, <clears throat> still they, they don't want their names shared or their emails um, due to fear ri ridicule from obviously uh, the sheep herd. And that's unfortunate, but you know what? There's a lot of people are starting to turn this around and they're, and they're gaining the confidence, they're understanding and realizing that this is is, is actually a very serious topic and a very important topic to bring the light to for as many people as we can. Now, um, again, I know, I know it's not a hunt story and you don't want to hear this story, it's a Sasquatch topic, but you know what, the, the title already pre-warned you to skip over it and there'll be hunt stories coming for you shortly. And, and just so you all know, I actually lost two and a half hours of my life this morning trying to figure out how to add a second YouTube channel onto my account to separate the uh, content. And I was, I was so aggravating, I was looking up how-to videos and nine out of 10 of them were, were with heavy duty Middle Eastern accents. And uh, I could barely understand them and I just couldn't figure it out and it was very frustrating and I have too many things to do and I gave up for now. I don't really give up on much, but I, I uh, dropped it for now. But I basically lost two and a half hours this morning which I didn't have to lose. And then I started thinking, I was like, you know what, why do I need to go out of my way to, to get two different YouTube channels? All you got to do is skip over the content you don't want to listen to. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay, so maybe try doing that. And you're obviously you're going to have to do that once the podcast launches too, because it's all the same contents going on there as well. All right, it's not that bad of a thing. It's not that bad of a thing to have to do for something free that takes a lot of time and money to provide for you. <laughs> okay. But anyway, here we go. I got an email from me. I'm going to share with you word for word. Um, this Obviously, this is a more of an adult topic, and this is an adult email. If I do slip up and drop some F-bombs, oh well. It's just a part of life. It's just a word. It's nothing to uh, lose sleep over. But anyway, listen to this one, all right? Hi, Steve. My name is Bill Hodgson. I live in Medford, Oregon, and I have... I live in Medford, Oregon, and I have had many encounters with these beings known as Sasquatch, starting in the mid-1990s to current day. At some point in the early 2000s, I decided to go do some research and find out what these beings are. During my studies, I found an organization of Bigfoot researchers. At first, I thought I was doing the right thing, and I was looking in the right direction. The director of the organization took a liking to me and asked me if I was willing to become an investigator. I accepted. And within that time frame, I learned a lot of things, but nothing really answered my questions. As I said before, I've had many encounters. As an investigator, I handled a lot of reports, and the majority of those reports consisted of seeing Bigfoot across the road, loud screams and howls at the distances, having things thrown at them or towards tents and cabins. These are all common encounters that most people experience. It wasn't until my face-to-face -face meeting with one of these beings that happened on October 29, 2010, a day I'll never forget. I was hunting black-tailed deer, wind was at my favor, and I was slightly drizzly and rainy. I believe I caught this thing off guard due to the weather. At first, I was in complete and utter disbelief that a, a six-foot-five female juvenile Sasquatch stood directly in front of me 25 yards tops. There was no doubt in my mind I knew exactly what I was looking at. It was not a buddy in a ghillie suit. It was not a tree stump. It was not a dead snag tree. It was a Sasquatch and there is nobody in this world that's going to tell me otherwise. And like you, I do not give a shit what people have to say about what I saw. I know exactly what I saw. I do believe that the knowledge that I did gain as an investigator helped me to understand what I'd seen. Had it been in the 90s, I would have shit my pants and ran from the woods screaming like a bitch. Not saying that the encounters they had in the 90s didn't scare the shit out of me. I'm saying that those encounters were as real as the Sasquatch I saw standing in front of me on that October day in 2010. Anyway, shortly after that experience, I stopped doing investigations 
I had my answers right there in front of me in the flesh and blood on that morning of October 29, 2010. Had I not had the experience and the knowledge I have learned as an investigator, I don't think I would have been able to deal with it. I'd be a liar if I said it doesn't mess up my hunting today. Really? Tell me all about it. Because I'm always looking over my shoulder and I firmly believe they're always there. Always. Yep, they are. Unfortunately. Kind of sucks ass. And, uh, and I'm going to put myself about 300 yards away from a guy got, where a guy got screamed at just a month ago, numerous times. Anyway, back to the story. That's a brief description of the encounter, but I think you get the idea. In your own experience, and you know enough to understand the situation I was in that day, needless to say, I spent the remainder of my day with my buddy of mine doing ranch work instead of hunting, and with all my experience and knowledge that I've gained as an investigator, I was still shaken. Today when I hunt, I don't stay as long as I used to. LOL. <laughs> I wish I could give you more details, but I'm afraid that it's just not enough space for me to write down every encounter I've had. That's not to mention the experiences my son has had, as well as numerous friends. Yeah, I hear you, man. Same as, same as my circle over here. There's a frickin' mosquito on me. What the hell? Mid-December. Get out of here, you little prick. I still have some friends in the research environment, but it is one of the most... Now listen to this, all right? I'm gonna read this word for word because this guy speaks it from first hand. I've heard and seen the similar, this, yeah. I still have many friends in this research environment, but it is one of the most ruthless, cutthroat shows I've ever seen, as well the one of the most self-serving environments I've ever got sucked into. I am glad to be out of that complete asshat show of tards. There is a percentage of researchers out there and organizations that would be nothing they would love nothing more than to copyright everything that is Bigfoot, so-called experts. But I can tell you from experience within that realm, what you're doing is helping those that need it most. As an investigator, I consider myself an advocate to those who had encounters to these things they didn't understand, and I was glad to help them the best I could. I think of those witnesses often. I am glad that I could give them a little piece of my understanding and to encourage them to educate themselves and not to listen to the masses of bonehead researchers they couldn't find their ass with both hands with the flashlight. And Steve, what you're doing is being an advocate for those who want to understand what the hell these damn things are, why they are, and where the hell do they come from, and why in the hell are we not informed. Yeah, cheers to that one, brother. I don't know if you read this on your cast, but if you do, I don't give a shit if you use my name. Bravo. Thanks for coming out, and I mean that. Because I have a feeling everybody's going to start doing the same pretty quick. I know what I saw, I know they are, they are part of this planet. They have always been part of this planet and I found a term one time and I like to use and that is a person can be taught, people cannot. But if you can change the mind of one person at a time and they t in turn can change the mind of another, well, now that would be something. And I honestly believe that's exactly what you're doing. Yep, that's what we're doing, it's working. Sorry to ramble on. But damn it, man, keep up the good work. I, for one, will be following you on YouTube, and I will recommend you and your mission to all of my friends that are like-minded. In fact, I already have. And I am sure a percentage of those researchers I know will call me up or email and give me shit. <laughs> well, thank f they don't count, right? But I don't give a shit what they have to say, and those that would are the very reason I left the fucking circus. I also got tired of getting my hands slapped when I tried to help the witnesses other than bullshitting them. Yeah, no shit. Isn't that that, uh, that fat slob money taker? Yeah, well, don't forget we're coming after his ass. With that being said, I will leave you with this. I do not believe Bigfoot are real. I know they are. Your friend and supporter, Bill Hodgson, Medford, Oregon. Well, bravo to you, Bill. And uh, uh, right now, there is a lack of other bills out there, but I have a funny feeling everybody's going to start piling in here pretty quick. And, uh, and we're going get, to get to the bottom of, of uh, this issue. I guess, you know what, we basically have got to the bottom of the issue. It's just a matter of uh, getting the confidence of all the people out there that have had these shit-eating experiences and getting them to... Uh, get their confidence back, their, their self-respect back, the respect back from their families and their friends, and, uh, and, and help 
get the public informed about what's going on out here because it's not too cool. It's not a very cool thing to, uh, to have these experiences get messed up, potentially get uh, PTSD and uh, have nowhere to turn, nowhere to go. It's just not fair. And uh, we are going to turn. We are going to turn this around without a doubt. I believe. I strongly believe we are. We are already jumping ahead in leaps and bounds, for certain. But anyway, um, on that note, what I think I'm as well. I'm going to do right now while we're here and on this topic is, I am going to share a piece of an email from a good friend of mine, a very very intelligent guy who has studied these things for many years. And um, I just think this is a little slice of an email I'm gonna share right after sharing the story just because it's somewhat fitting. And this is a reply email to me. And I'll switch up one name here just in case there's possibly some kind of a legal conflict to avoid. And if, uh, if so, you know what, on one of those notes, if you're one of those douchebag researchers who has a problem with me, and uh, you feel compelled to attack me through social media pages. I'm real easy to find. If you really think that you and I have issues or you want to make life uncomfortable for me, please come and seek me out privately and, and we will meet up and we'll hash it out. All right? And that's an open invitation to any one of you bogus um, individuals who are angry with me or feeling threatened because we're about to expose the shit out of your ass. Uh, you really think I'm doing something wrong. You come and find me and we'll talk about it. All right, getting back to this email. The thing is, Mel Dumb and the others know that they are not primate. I know for a fact Mel Dumb has personally experienced some of the supernatural things, but out of a personal agenda and cognitive dissonance, he refuses to acknowledge it in public and continues down the path of going around in circles. Tell me something I don't already know. They all want to scientifically prove that Sasquatch is a bipedal ape or at worst a missing link of some sort. But if the Sasquatch Genome Project could not get a fair and honest consideration, how do they expect anything they present to be taken seriously? This is all about money, reputation, worldview, and pride with emphasis on money. The definition of insanity, do the same thing over and over and expecting the different results. That is exactly what these people are doing. Do you think? <laughs> no shit. And uh, that is why we're here now, right? Uh, the real people are here now. The people with the knowledge are here now. We're banding together and we're blowing the top off this shit-eating topic. And we're breaking the cycle of these ding-dongs leading all of you in circles. And that's what they're doing and that's what they have been doing. Don't kid yourselves for one second. You know, it's funny, sometimes you'll see, uh, I'll get sucked into watching a video or reading something. And it'll be uh, showcasing somebody who can, calls himself a researcher, and they've been researching the, these beings for whatever, 10, 15, 20 years. And then, uh, but if you use common sense to look at them and say, Oh, have you? How many photographs have you had of these things? Or how many have you seen? And you wouldn't believe how many of these people will say, Zero. <laughs> So, in common sense world, these individuals who boast of studying these things for like 20 years, um, if they use that for a resume at a job interview, they get laughed out of the room. Right? 